right. You can hear me. Okay. All right. So one of my favorite things to do while traveling abroad is actually trying to cook. It's a fun way to allay your resources and a fun way to make them more memorable. Also, one pro tip. Stay at an Airbnb so you'll get to meet the host and have a this experience. So last night we went to El Adilio, which is the best restaurant in Cuba in my opinion. Very heavy. And this is a tip. When you're at a nice restaurant, don't eat all the food. I see a takeaway container. So we here have here black beans and rice. We have some potatoes. We have a piece of bacon. Some yam, super good. And what we actually did was uh, in here in Cuba, we have uh, limited ingredients. So Cindy had the great idea of putting some sort of canned tomato in here, which actually looks pretty good. And you can actually see we have the gas operated stove. So we're kind of cooking this. It smells pretty good. I'm gonna lower the temperature a little bit. And now, we got 30 eggs for 3 C.O.S.A., which is about 3 bucks. So I'm going to crack in some eggs. I've probably cracked at least 10 trillion eggs in my lifetime. So I'm um, pretty good at this now. So why are you cooking? What are some of your surprising things you learned from living in Cuba, or being in Cuba for a So what I, I learned about Cuba, one of the most important things is... Okay, so... You know, uh, the, the narrative about Cubans is, oh, you know, Americans are so wasteful and Cubans are so resourceful, blah, blah. But actually, um, the reason why everyone here is so resourceful is that that's the only option. And the big, therefore, the big epiphany that I had is, you're only really going to innovate if you really are forced to. You only do it by necessity. And actually, one thing I'm actually very impressed with the, the Cuban people, it shows their ingenuity, is that given limited resources and materials, they're able to make really, really good food out of very simple ingredients. So it just kind of reminds me that in anything in life, you don't actually need the best of whatever in order to innovate. Often having not as good ingredients brings out the inner creativity in you. And also it just kind of comes to a matter of pride is, uh, for example, we've had some pretty good food here at, uh, in Havana, but in terms of memorableness, I think actually some of our best memories are here at this Airbnb, cooking your own food, being scrappy, and actually one of my favorite experiences being here in Cuba is just practicing my Spanish, like talking to different people, being able to go to the local place, getting 30 eggs for a 3 say because some other guy in the street tried to haggle with me for like 8 say I'm like, no way, Jose. And so even cooking this meal, even though it might not be the objectively the best meal, uh, I have also realized that food here in Cuba, everything is so subjective. Like there's actually a local restaurant I went to. It's only like two say Jose, which is like two or three bucks. And the food is so simple, but it tasted so good. Cindy, do you remember the, the black beans we had that one day? So there's just cooking black beans and rice, and it's the most simple meal ever, but it tasted so good because Com uh, comparatively speaking, you know, uh, this is uh, like, you know, the thing with Cuba is that it's probably not the best food we've had in the world, but, you know, compared to the fact that actually it's kind of a little bit difficult to find food, the food actually tastes pretty good. So, realizing that, yeah, everything in life, everything is just uh, subjective and comparative. So even when I found these eggs, I was so happy. It was like the best three dollars I spent in my life. Too. Oh. All right, uh, continuing. So I actually cleaned up, had a good cash off with it. But what I think that's so interesting about Cuba is that a lot of innovation happens based on need. Is that like you know people aren't you know like okay so you have a, a car from the 1950s. I don't think you're trying to be you know resourceful for the sake of resourcefulness. Is uh, it's based on need and I think that's what dictates a lot of stuff in our lives is that like Americans for example we're not wasteful for the sake of being wasteful or, or not we're not consumers for the sake of it it's that because we just have so many more options and this is so interesting to me about human nature too is that like you know once 
or if Cuba once opens up and there's Amazon Prime here, I'm sure the, the Cuban consumption habits can be the same as Americans. Like, if, <laughs> if you had the option of having a 1950s car or like a modern Honda Civic or Tesla, whatever it may be, then there's a difference between necessity versus like your revealed preferences. And so I just want to give you a quick tour of some cool stuff here at our Airbnb in Cuba. So some basic things that I love. We got things, we got our eggs, got some cacao powder, coffee, this is important. American styled uh, coffee maker. We have this to turn on the, the stove, salt, also bottled water, coffee, I've been drinking a lot of that, bottled coffee. This really nice uh, standing desk here, which is totally makeshift. So I'll stand here, currently reading uh, Peter Thiel 021. And the nice standing desk here. Actually my host Ricardo, he actually designed these chairs super duper nice. So even standing here, standing desk, getting some good work done. Du -du 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 -du. And it's actually really cool because here in Cuba, apparently according to my, bed, uh, my friend uh, Don Dillon, the, the artists are actually the ones that are doing really well. So this one says, the calm is beauty. So he, he designed and created this piece. These, these uh, pieces of furniture are actually original from the, the place here and he refurbished it. Super duper beautiful, nice textures. And this is actually um, a, a wooden thing, a tree stump that he got during some sort of storm, turned that into an art piece, which is always fun. My infamous shark shoes, which are fantastic for traveling, and other fun details that I like. This little thing here. I have no idea who's on the other side. And actually, this is actually one of my favorite pieces of Ricardo. Essentially, it's, it's, it's a perfect square and it's split, but it's black painted on canvas and it kind of gives you this really awesome effect. And I've been able to make some really cool photographs from it. And you can see how it's mounted on the side. Other cool things, other artworks from other artists. And this is our bedroom. Super duper nice, really cool. Lamp here. I love the design. Ricardo designed this as well. Air conditioning. This makes life very, very nice. Also, another piece he made was called Solitude. Three, three pieces next to each other. Very beautiful. And it's cool, he made a, an art piece based on like the, the golden rectangle or the golden section. Very nice vibes. Another cool stained desk, he fabricated all of this. And yeah, so that's our basic Airbnb. Retiled the whole bathroom. This is actually the original. And yeah, so essentially, yeah, Cuba is super duper awesome. It's been a really interesting experience to be a place without having essentially Wi-Fi for a week and just seeing what a life looks like with the embargo. Essentially, more of the story is. When necessity calls, you're going to be able to innovate, you're going to be able to create interesting things, and uh, I'm going to share with you some more thoughts on the way.